So now what we're going to look at is going through the actual report and, and using the model that Jocelyn just outlined, the R2C2 model. So as mentioned earlier, the goal of a formal debrief is to encourage the doctor to better self-reflect and come up with a plan uh, in terms of um, the report they received. Because as Jocelyn mentioned, it, the report is really just data. But how do we make that come to life in a learning context? Uh, the, in, and in terms of the report, it is quite a comprehensive report, uh, 30 pages in length, but don't be too put off by that. It's just some... We've done a lot of work around what clinicians want in a report, and we've tried to cover everything for clinicians. So, you know, if they want to know how the statistics were derived, there's a piece of that at the back of the report. Um, if they want to know, you know, more about the percentages and, and percentiles, that's all there too. Um, and this is really the job of the uh, trained coach to um, have a look at that report, be familiar with it, because it's the same format no matter what sort of report, when you receive the report, it is the same format. There's national benchmarking and a key element of the report is a reflective exercise and an action plan where the doctor spends some time outside of the formal debrief looking at their report and hopefully when they come to the formal debrief, uh, they've got some insights that they wish to discuss. Now, there will be times, and we'll talk about this later in this presentation, where doctors may not have spent some time on their report. And we've got some ideas, both Jocelyn and I, about how to, um, to work with that. Um, so the debriefing part, as mentioned earlier, is really important in terms of getting the most out of the multi-source feedback exercise. Jocelyn mentioned some 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 good work done by the uh, the the Royal Australasian College of Physicians, where they published some work around multi-source feedback. Uh, it was a pilot done using these reports, and one of the things that they found was it was a debriefing process with those uh, doctors that was valued the most. The report was helpful, but it was actually unpacking that report with a trained facilitator. Or, or a trained coach. Um, you can see on this slide here, it moves from left to right, uh, that uh, it just quickly outlines um, that usually 30 feedbacks from patients are required, 12 from colleagues, a report is produced uh, and, and, and sent, and then the debrief, and then there's some sort of self-reflection after the debrief. And that sort of total period of an MSF activity is around that three to four months in terms of implementing what was discussed at the formal debrief and seeing whether that's helped um, in terms of the changes that has been co-created with yourselves and the doctor. So providing a formal debrief using the model as Jocelyn's outlined before, those four components, the relational aspect, the initial reactions from the doctor receiving the report, confirming that content of the report and coaching for change. It's important, as I said earlier, that the doctor try and review the report prior to the session, but it's important for you as a, as a, as a uh, trained coach to understand what's in the report. And as I said, because the structure of the reports are the same, um, once you've done one or two or three of these, you'll have a good sense of what's in the report. And I would typically uh, just highlight some aspects that I would like to discuss in the report with the doctor. Um, so just have them at hand, but uh, as Jocelyn outlined before, it's really about what the doctor wants to talk about. But if you feel there's some things that doctors missed out on talking about, you, uh, you might want to uh, raise those points. It's also important to mention here that uh, I, what I do as a formal coach 
is I would email the doctor uh, once I've received the report and just to let them know that I'm, I'm looking forward to that discussion. It's, it's, it's an opp opportunity for us uh, together to, uh, to, to help that doctor understand more about their strengths um, and, on, and also about what might they want to focus on in terms of continuous quality improvement. Uh, so that's just a, a gentle, informal email. So some doctors have told me that, um, you know, if I hadn't done that, they were quite worried. It was very formal. They might be in trouble. Uh, so you really want to allay those fears and say this is really an opportunity for them to further reflect. And your role as a trained coach is to walk alongside them in that process and just to be a mirror reflecting with them and 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 a listening board, really. Uh, and, and that email prior to, I think, has been very helpful so that when we get to the debrief, we've, we've already had an introduction via email. So, uh, yes, look, there's a lot of uh, theory uh, and evidence around in terms of preparing for a formal debrief. Um, so, you know, people, when they come to the debrief, yeah, there might be some issues that they're going through. So it's important in terms of that first bit, the relational aspect, the relationship, build the relationship, just to say things like, um, so... Uh, it's a good time to have this discussion. I know we've booked it and we're sitting here and they might say, oh, look, you know, it's not a great time. All things have broken loose here at work. And, and that might be a time to say, well, look, maybe we reschedule this appointment and we'll talk about that a bit later. That might be something that comes up. But they might say, this is a great time. I'm really looking forward to uh, talking about my report. So it's just important to understand that there is context usually when somebody's in front of you and just to sort of uh, get a sense of that before you start the actual process of debriefing. Unpacking that report, there is a lot, as I said before, this is the structure of the report. There's an introduction, there's some overview of results. If the doctor has done both patient and colleague feedback, which we call a full MSF. In some cases, we've had doctors just do the patient feedback and or the colleague feedback. Um, so it's just to be aware of that. The self-assessment data is important and there is a guide for performance reflection and some supporting documents like how the scores were calculated. Uh, so that report introduction, as you can see there, I won't go into detail. You can read that. You'll have the slides. Just gives you a bit of background about the report that orientates uh, the doctor to the idea of data-informed reflection. This is, I find really helpful as a trained coach, this graphical overview of both patient and colleague feedback. So uh, make sure you get a good understanding of this in terms of, you know, the grey horizontal bars are the range of scores for all candidates. Uh, so this is the benchmarking. The vertical lines are the median scores of all those doctors. The black crosses are the doctor's scores. So you can see on this particular graph, the doctor's done quite well with their patients. Uh, I think in every case, they're above the median of their peers for all the questions. And remember, these items are, apart from questions one and, and 13, these are behavioural items for patient feedback. So this is the top graph there. Um, you know, things like warmth of greeting, being able to listen, explaining things in a clear manner, reassuring, confidence in your ability. These are being able to express concerns. These are all um, behavioural aspects. But in this case, the doctor's done really well. They're above the median. When we come to the colleague feedback, you can see there that in this case, we've added an extra white cross. That's the doctor's self-reflection scores. Um, you'll see there... Because it's only one rating, they're going to be either uh, um, 0, 25, 50, 75, or 100, because, you know, that's the, that's the scores for a self-assessment. 
uh, whereas the black crosses are across, say, 13 or 14 or 12 colleagues. So they're going to be in that range. And, and again, the vertical line is the median. And you can see there that, well, in this case, the range of scores are, are, are somewhat similar to patients. Um, they cover down to the 30%, right up to the 100% in terms of the grey coloured boxes. So, and what I tend to look for here, just as a quick overview, is are there any, like this particular doctor has rated themselves excellent on quite a few of the items, for example, question three, four, five, uh, but they haven't scored above the medium. So that may be a concern for them, may not, but it's just interesting that some of their self-ratings are, in fact, this particular doctor's got quite a lot of excellence. They think they're quite good or very good. Um, but in most cases, uh, they are below the median scores. So that might be a cause for concern, may not, uh, but that's what I'm seeing as I quickly look at this. And I might just highlight some of the areas where their self-rating is well above how they've um, performed. Now, there might be a very good reason for that. Um, uh, so, as I said, this is only a quick overview just to give you a flavour of what as we start to look more deeply into the report. And in the patient feedback, the quantitative side, you're given um, mean scores, they've done very well. Um, there's usually a colour code for what the blue means. That means they're, they're well above the 75% percentile. Um, you'll even have a graph where you can see the blue. Most of the items were scored excellent. Um, sometimes there might be an item that hasn't scored as many excellence. That might be one way you want to look at the report. Um, I also, the next graph's quite informative. <clears throat> oh, we have some quality. There is, I'll just duck back there. There is another um, <clears throat> uh, descriptive graph, uh, table where it looks at the number of poor ratings, fair ratings, good, very good and excellent ratings. If somebody has one or two items ticked where it's poor, that's a cause for concern, I think, with patient feedback um, because patients don't usually do that. Uh, so you, you'll normally find that patient ratings are quite at the higher end of the spectrum, um, and that's just what patients do. They uh, And sometimes doctors will say in a debrief, well, look, I've scored um, 85%. That's pretty good. But in the terms of patient feedback, that may not be as good because the median is usually quite high. So I would tend to, in that point, just look at some of their um, uh, scores in terms of their uh, individual breakdowns across the items and just see which ones are performing uh, better than others and to just ask them why do they think that's the case. So the background to all of this data is really a curious approach from the formal uh, coach, it's so. Tell me, what do you make of that? Um, I mean, in this particular situation, they're all in the nineties, so it's quite a. And we'll talk about what do you do with a a doctor who gets very good scores and can't see any room for improvement? How do we approach that? And we'll talk about that later in the presentation. I often find the comments are very powerful. Usually, more the colleague comments, but sometimes patient comments too. In this particular, for this particular doctor, out of their 30 patients, they've had six patients make a comment. That's fairly typical. I did have one doctor the other day where uh, over 20 patients made a comment. That's wonderful because it, there was so much information there for the doctor to look at. Uh, but typically with patients, there's not too many comments. In this particular case, um, they are very positive. Uh, comments um, often get these, you know, no improvement need a great doctor. There is one comment actually around time management. It doesn't say any more than that. So just something about time. Maybe they didn't get enough time. I would say that was the case um, about this particular doctor. And usually I would then look at the scores around time and just see if there was an issue there. Um, but some lovely comments there too. 
always there when needed, happy to fit my kids in. Um, you know, uh, so so that that's encouraging. And I would tend to at this point ask the doctor, you've done wonderful in this. And I would pick on one or two of the items, for example, um, respect. Um, so you've obviously scored very well on this. Can you tell me, you know, Dr. X, what is it about Dr. X that scores highly in terms of patients feeling they're respected? What do you do? What behaviours would I see you doing that gets such high scores? And sometimes that stumps them. They, oh, I don't know. I, And then I say, no, I'm, I'm curious. You've obviously got high scores. I want to know what it is about Dr. X that produces those high scores. And then they start, oh, well, this is what I do. And then you start getting into some of the behaviours and you want to reinforce that. Keep doing that. That's great. You know, wonderful. And they, it, it, I find that that part of the coaching goes very well. You know, they start to open up and, yeah, I do do that. This is what I do. I think this works really well. Well, keep doing it because obviously your scores are showing that. And with the colleague feedback, and, you know, this was the table I was talking about. In patient feedback, you have the same table. And I would generally look at those columns. Like, for example, I might look at, look, there's so much to talk about. But remember, this is all in the context of after the person has talked about what's of interest to them. So, um, and, and maybe I should sort of reiterate that. Because um, at the moment, I'm really just talking about the report. What I would have done at the start uh, is ask them, so what, what, you know, what reactions, uh, and that's part of the model, because I've really dived into the content at this stage. As a formal coach, you'll want to know about the content. But I would have asked them, and we'll keep revisiting this, uh, you know, what reactions did you have when you received the report? Um, opening up the report, that usually generates a lot of discussion. And now, you know, uh, what what is it that you wanted to talk about? And to really find that out uh, as, uh, and that's what I would go with initially. Uh, and what I'm talking about now, and perhaps I should have prefaced this earlier, is, is you just looking at the report and getting a sense of what that feels like and looks like and have some ideas about things you may want to bring into that discussion. And in this case, so uh, back to this particular graph, excellent ratings. You know, the teaching and training of colleagues, question six, that was the lowest, oh, sorry, it was the ability to say no, it had the lowest excellent ratings. Um, and uh, that might be something you want to talk about. They may have raised it. If they haven't raised it, you may want to circle it. I mean, they've got 10 excellence in punctuality and reliability. Fantastic. Um, so they're obviously doing well in that area. So, again, there's there's so much you could talk about. Key thing is, what do they want to talk about? If they don't want to talk about much, you've got a lot to talk about together. And, again, I would say, I noticed this in the report. Would that be worth discussing further? And they might go, yes, please. And so what were your thoughts about those scores or that particular comment? Or I noticed throughout all the comments there was a theme of you're so approachable. Tell me more about what makes you so approachable. What do you do uh, with your patients or, or, or with your colleagues that makes you so approachable? And you'll see that, uh, you know, either across the uh, quantitative data or it might be the qualitative data. I used the word approachable there just then. Uh, sense of humour. A lot of the doctors will tend to, in my experience, focus on the negative. They will zoom straight in on how they could become more effective and, in a sense, dismiss what was being said about them positively. And I, I like to pull them up on that, um, even if they don't want to talk about it. I think it's important. Uh, that's something uh, just to raise because in any change model, it's really about what do I uh, what do I do well and what do I need to keep doing well, and obviously what don't I do well and 
need to improve upon as well. So both very important in terms of that uh, that that debrief. So the self-assessment data we saw initially on that graphical overview, they were the white crosses. This just gives you the quantitative data. You can see this particular doctor has rated themselves very good or excellent, quite high. I would often see some doctors rate themselves good. They usually don't rate themselves fair. They may on a particular item. You know, they may be a, uh, a trainee and feel that they don't really have management or leadership skills, question 18. So they might rate themselves as fit. And that might be an okay sort of rating. Um, but generally, I see most ratings from good, very good to excellent. Um, and in this particular case, this doctor hasn't scored as well as I think they expected to score. So I think before I met this doctor, I would be expecting a little disappointment on their behalf that they may feel that, that this is not a great report for them. So how you deal with that, and we'll have some tips around that, how do you deal or support a doctor uh, that's, that's upset by their results? You know, they may even be angry about their results. They may have thought they performed a lot better, and they may say things like, um, I think the colleagues have got it in for me. I hope they don't say that, but I have had one doctor say that. I think that my colleagues have got it in for me. And we've got some tips about how you might formally, as, as a coach, help them on that journey of um, self-reflection, really. Uh, and I think this is what Jocelyn talked about, the process issues earlier uh, on. You know, uh, so we're talking about... I sort of dwell straight into the content bit, but there's a lot of process around this as formal coaches. And hopefully as a formal coach, you would have um, had some um, background in, in um, the process issues of um, debriefing, such as, you know, reflective listening, non-judgmental, um, uh, open asking ended questions, those sorts of things are really important. And, you know, to sum, to sum up that process is I, I like to take a curious approach. I'm just curious. I noticed this. Tell me more about that. Uh, very important. But it's good to have the data and an understanding of that data. So hopefully what I've been able to do is just give you a little bit of um, uh, background to some of the uh, uh, numbers in the report. And obviously the comments are quite self-explanatory. There is also in the report a guidance for reflection, particularly on the interpersonal skill items. You know, if they, this is a, what we call the ready reckoner. And it's, and, and there's a colleague feedback ready reckoner just to help them, re, you know, what skills would I need to do if I hadn't did so well with, say, listening? And you can see there, and there's a brief explanation of the vertical columns uh, in the report. Uh, in terms of agenda setting, um, empathy. Um, it, it's really just the ready reckoner. I've had some doctors say this was really helpful for them and they'd like to talk about it more in terms of some of those skills. The action plan is quite important. So what you want folk then um, uh, as a result is to complete the reflective exercise and the action plan uh, after the debrief, it might actually, this might even be before the debrief as well, in terms of when they are going through their report. Uh, so it's important that they, um, that you together, uh, well, they would fill this report in. But I think as a formal coach, you are uh, asking them, you know, what are the one or two or three things that you might do differently? Uh, or do more of in terms of what we've discussed today. And as Jocelyn highlighted a bit further, you want to sort of delve into that. If someone says, I'm just going to become a better communicator, well, how? You know, what will you do? When will you do it? 
Um, what would it look like? How would you know if you've been successful or not? So you 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 want to take them through that change for action step by step. But you know you've only got so much time. I I think I prefaced this presentation with, you know, I normally do sixty minute debriefs. And if someone said to me a formal case, so what times do you put to that? Well, that varies, but sometimes building the relationship might be five oh. minutes, give or take. Um, exploring their reactions might be five minutes. It might be 10 or 15 minutes. Diving into the content might be 20, 30, 30 minutes, but you really want to leave um, at least five to 10 minutes for the, uh, that's my, what I think works for me, or works for them, that my experience, five to 10 minutes for that change for action. Now, those action points hopefully would have arisen throughout the discussion. Yeah, I can see that's an issue. And what I'm going to do is do this. Let's move on to the next bit you wanted to talk about. And, and to come back to those action points as a formal coach, as a trained coach, and, and talk about how you're going to or how the doctor is going to action those points. That's very important to do that. Um, and, yeah, that's where you can leave it. But later on in the presentation, we'll talk about all sorts of scenarios that doctors come up with in terms of either um, resistance to change or, you know, wanting to do too much. Uh, we'll, we'll cover those in uh, later on. So. We keep coming back to the R2C2 model about building those relationships. As I said before, you know, tell them a bit about yourselves, find out about where they practice, what's it like where they practice, who even, I sometimes even ask them as an icebreaker, sometimes it works. Um, you know, tell us about the colleagues that comment on you. Which colleagues did you choose? Were they a mix of colleagues? Um, were they people that you work with now or? You know, maybe they've arrived in a place and they've only been there six months and half of their college of folk they work with in another setting. So that might be worth sort of discussing and building that relationship. Exploring reactions and reflections. What was it like getting the report? Um, you know, was there anything that really stood out for you, surprisingly, either good or not so good? Uh, so you, you really want to, to me, that sets the tone for the formal debrief. Um, and then that confirmed content, as I said, I dwell straight into that, the report, um, and, you know, what's it saying? Uh, and it, it's quite structured, um, but it has the same structure in terms of patient feedback and colleague feedback, in terms of the graphs and the figures uh, and the coaching for change. Uh, you know, you need time for that just to, Okay, it's been you know wonderful. Thanks for your time. I've been privileged to 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 hear you share uh, your thoughts about your report, and you've got a plan to go forward. Um, great. Uh, so that usually how we end up the discussion, and you get a sense of how well it went when they say this has been wonderful. Sometimes I get doctors saying there should be more of this where we get an opportunity to talk about uh, what's it like practicing as a doctor in terms of my communication skills and my professionalism there's not enough opportunity for this how wonderful it's been to have this opportunity I often get that from doctors um, and I think the I think the MSF report is something that um, has real value for doctors and, and and I often see the doctors see this it's sort of like it's feedback that they don't usually get in a formal and structured way and I think this sort of feedback generates a discussion that they're not used to but they like because it starts talking about them as a person and those insights about them as a reflective practitioner so it's very powerful as a trained coach uh, and very privileged to have this opportunity to work with the doctors that you'll be working with. And for more information, 
you can see on the slide there that's been raised previously, you can uh, look at that information or email folk and there's uh, many more resources that you can make use of.